This is a teardown of a Zonet branded networking switch. It's a 24 port 10100 switch, model number ZFS3124. It's an older switch, obviously. Interesting color choice. And I'm kind of curious to see what it's going to look like inside. This is something I would have recycled regardless, to be honest, but. Hopefully this also provides benefit to other people who want to see. A lot of these teardown videos I do, I try to make sure they're things that people don't normally do, just because they're not necessarily the highest quality videos. Um, plus everybody and their mothers tore down a Dell laptop or a Apple PC on YouTube, so I don't really see what there is to gain to make more videos on that topic. Plus, it's always interesting to see what's inside stuff. It's an interesting metallic blue color. I don't even know if it's supposed to be metallic or not. <laughs> it's just not like, painted very well. Alrighty. So many screws. I will say the uh, out of all the networking gear I've tore down, whoops, um, the oh shoot, just a second. there we go. The WRT54G um, design of wireless routers. It's one of the easiest ones to tear apart. Just kind of grab the front and back, crack it open like you're uh, breaking the leg off a lobster or something, or a crab, I don't know. And then uh, you uh, split it in half, and then there's one screw to get the board out. Alright. More screws. Nope, not screws. Metal tabs. There we go. Alright, one metal tab. Just has a little metal tab with three tack welds holding it down. Looks like they did use primer to paint these, so maybe that is actually a metallic color. Just almost looks like you can see the steel shining through with the uh, silver specks, but you know, a little breakout board on a ribbon cable for what is more than likely the front indicator, Some lights for traffic, and quite clear <laughs> and had multiple intents for this front panel because lots of little holes drilled out. Interesting choice. That is cool. All the uh, surface mounting LEDs that my camera won't focus on. Kind of fun. Can't tell, I assume they're multicolor. They might just be green. Usually there's something in this era would be green. Actually more going on on this PCB than I was expecting. And it doesn't look like I'll be getting off the heat sinks, but we'll take a stab at it. Or take a stab at my hand in the process, knowing me. <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna need a bigger, bigger tool to bust those off. Unfortunately, let's see if we can get this one off. It's kind of cockeyed. Hmm. No, all I'm doing is I'm twisting the chip. There's not really going to be a way. Uh, I hate it when they use stuff like that. Oh, it won't be pulling the heat sinks off. I am impressed. There's no bad caps in this. I feel like this would have been the right era for it to be at risk of bad caps. 
but they're all nice and flat. Odds are this switch probably works just fine. It's just, there's no reason for it. Anyone that's gonna buy a switch that's this physically large is just gonna go buy a gigabit switch for the same price. <laughs> like, I don't think, even if I sold it for $40, I don't think I'd be able to compete with uh, the gigabit switches. Well, this has some heft to it. Lots of through hole stuff. Unfortunately, no easy way to get those heat sinks off with the tools I have on hand. One thing a person could do, depending on what they were doing, you could almost, uh, this would be a good housing to repurpose. Use this power supply to power whatever you're going to use. Or use a built-in power connector. Or just completely replace it. Something more functional for your needs. I don't know why, but I like to save these for some reason. Although probably not this one, because I'll never see this pin configuration. Yeah, it's in the build. Good. Um, be interesting to see if they labeled this power supply for what it's rated for. Kind of neat to shove a couple Raspberry Pis in here and then some uh, 40 millimeter fans for side to side cooling and yeah, just unfortunately don't do stuff like that. Although boy oh boy, if I uh, was into some of those hobbyist projects and had the time for it, I could do some really fun stuff. <laughs> this hasn't been plugged in in a while so hopefully no getting shocked. Based on the coloring, I'm guessing it's probably 12 and 5 volt. Let's see here. No labeling to indicate who it's made by. Camera's being annoying. I'm going to look at this with my own eyes. Looks like fairly decent power supply. All the high and low voltage is isolated. Should be an opto isolator right there, yep. I would speculate that this puts out 5 and 12 volts, more than likely. Model number PSSPA0-GP. Hmm. Interesting. Well, I guess that's all there is to see. So, hopefully that was interesting, and thanks for watching.